All right, guys, well, this isn't necessarily a endorsement of any of these knives here, and this isn't necessarily a statement that these knives are the most durable knife in the world. I think every knife has its breaking limit or breaking point. And most importantly, I think that, you know, while it's important to understand that, you know, knives break, all knives break at some point, but these are gonna be knives that I have and would bet my life on. And today, like I said, we're gonna be talking about these knives, what I think about them, and why I think they're such incredible knives that you can truly bet your life on and kind of ultimately how I have, right? Um, so these are all knives that have seen plenty of use under my, or under the behest of me. That The Cold Steel SRK here is a stand-in for my original Cold Steel SRK. I no longer have it, but this is my stand-in for the original SRK that I have plenty of videos on. So this one is a little bit newer, hasn't seen as much use, but I still have absolutely no doubts in recommending it because once again, I have used the SRK, my original SK5 SRK and an SRKC quite extensively. And so I do have a lot of dirt time with the SRK as a knife. And and the rest of them have all seen a good amount of use. And so regardless to what a lot of people like to say in the comment section below, where they're like, you never use your knives and stuff like, I don't know how much more used I can get a knife to look, but invariably there will always be like that one person in the comment section below. They're like, nope, looks brand new and unused as you know, there's like rust and patina and like dirt and trapped into the blade. Um, you know, like people will always just sit there and say that. So I find it rather hilarious um, that the comment section is just an absolute mad house of people who are very unintelligent and very uninformed at many times. Now, I do appreciate the real subscribers down there. Go into a bat for me and uh, you guys are awesome. But anyways, let's talk about this now. Let's jump into it. All right. So the first one is probably the most unlikely. And truthfully speaking, I think so many people sit here and sleep on the Mora Clipper, the Mora Companion. And it has actually been shown in some footage and other people have proven. These actually are three quarter tang. So the tang goes to about out here. These are not half tang. I do believe the original clippers um, were at some point half tang. And so at some point these were, you know, kind of um, a little bit less durable than they actually are. But the beauty of a three quarter tang knife, even if it isn't, you know, if it doesn't have a tang protruding, they still have an incredible amount of strength. And once again, I've shown on many occasions that this little clipper, it truthfully isn't the best knife for batoning because, you know, it's a very thin stock. So this is like, I think it's like zero 0.08 um, or something along those lines. So it's like incredibly thin, less than a tenth of an inch thick. So when you do like baton with this knife, it is very challenging to like actually so it can be kind of challenging with this knife to baton because you're just not really pushing that much mass through anything in particular. However, it's important to note that this knife is not like non-durable. It's perfectly fine. And I have definitely ran this one through its paces. I think the C100 is also a great choice because it tends to hold an edge pretty well. Maybe not the best, but you can also resharpen it very easily. Now, another one that I have used the heck out of, and I've actually had two of these, is my Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. Once again, it doesn't look that beat, but that's because it's an uncoated piece of CPM 3V, so it's not really gonna show wear. There's nothing here to like show wear, and I obviously clean these knives. So um, anyways, that aside, I've had two Bark River Bushcrafters throughout the course of my life, and I absolutely love these guys. And for me, this is like, in my mind, that Goldilocks knife where it's not too big, it's not too small, it's not too thin, it's not too thick. It's just really a perfect knife, especially for bushcrafting. Would I say this is the best survival knife? Probably not. This isn't like the world's most amazing survival specific knife. But as far as bushcrafting goes, it is incredibly hard to beat. The Bushcrafter. I know obviously it's named the Bushcrafter, but it is just very well built, well thought out, and well designed for everything wilderness self-reliance. Of course, this is the type of knife that you'd want to pair with something like a hatchet and an axe, um, and a saw if you can, but you know, if you can pair this with larger tools that are going to be able to do you know, more industrial tasks such as felling trees and stuff, this knife is going to do an incredibly good job at crafting things like shelters, um, you know, making notches, feather sticks, obviously, um, so many different tasks this knife is going to excel at. 
Now, another one that kind of disappoints me because a lot of people come to the comment section and I don't doubt that these knives to an extent have some degree of weakness, but one that really disappoints me is when people come on the channel and say that, you know, the Chris Reeve Knives Pacific is a weak knife because it has a hollow grind, because it has a thin tip. And I don't know, I've personally ran this thing through the ringer. Once again, it's like if you jam this in between two pieces of, you know, rebar and smack it with a sledgehammer on the side, you know, could you get it to break? Absolutely. You know, realistically, every knife has its failing point. But for me, I mean, hopefully you guys can see this uh, gun coat is actually pretty good at hiding a lot of use. So, so long as I don't show it too, too close, you know, it actually looks pretty new. But, um, you know, this thing has seen a crap ton of use and uh, really have just absolutely thrashed on this um, knife. And it really holds up quite well. This is a knife that I've done in a lot of survival training with. And that's why it always blows my mind when people are like, oh, you know, why would you try trust your life to, you know, a um, Chris Reeve knife specific? It's not made for that. It's not made for this. And to be fair, like I said, I had to modify some aspects to this knife to make it better. Once again, the spine was rounded out of box. So I had to flatten the spine here and sharpen it so that I could strike ferro rods, but I did. And I also rounded off the upper guard so that I can hold this knife, you know, in a more closely choked up position. But, you know, after the few modifications I did, it really is proven itself to be a excellent field survival knife and I really don't have any complaints. Next one up is of course the Cold Steel SRK and this is the CPM 3V version but I've had an SK5 version and I beat the heck out of that knife as well and it really did quite well and funny enough most of the SRKs like the San Mai and CPM 3V versions are actually flag rot flat ground, whereas the SK5 version was hollow ground. And once again, a lot of people would say, you know, oh, the blade will break, it'll snap, you know, all these kinds of things because it's a hollow grind. And actually, I never had any of those issues and I did not take it easy on my um, SK5 version of the SRK. It was a fantastic knife, performed well. I sold it because I was getting rid of some survival knives. But outside of that, like it was a completely fine, completely usable knife and honestly, great value, especially I think I got it for like 30 bucks so really cannot complain on that knife it was awesome all right next one up and last one for the video is the tops fieldcraft this is a well-loved knife especially by me and I think especially in the community as a whole these guys are just indestructible pieces of survival knife ish um, or survival knife this is just an indestructible piece of survival knife. And so <laughs> um, this guy has seen much love, many resharpens. I force patinaed the blade because there was quite a few rust spots. So I took, took those rust spots off and then force patinaed it, as you guys can see there. Some of it is kind of coming off because you know you have to sharpen it every so often. But for the most part, this knife is absolutely incredible. Love it to death. And for me, this is another very classic knife that just absolutely is a tank. Like this thing can take so much abuse and just keep trucking on. And it's well designed for both survival and bushcrafting. Now, of course, it was originally designed to be a little bit more of a bushcrafting knife. So it's it leans more into that, but it is a great knife for all around wilderness tasks. And I even ground off the coating up here to make it so that I can strike ferro rods off of the spine. So did that as well. And uh, yeah, this is just an overall really solid knife it's hard to go wrong with and yeah the tops field craft is just awesome definitely would bet my life on any of these knives already have quite a few times especially the crk pacific and the tops field craft and clipper but um, and even the brk bushcrafter but these are some incredible knives um, absolutely stunning and they really put in a lot of work anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed the video as always god bless and i'm out